welcome to us at the beginning of the conference this morning is that privatization is very much on the agenda here. And I was eager to come to this conference in part to learn more about uh, uh, what Vietnam has already done and is planning. Um, <clears throat> so, so let me uh, uh, jump into this. Let's see. So what I'm going to be focused on here are firm level outcomes of privatization with a special emphasis on firm performance issues. So productivity, profitability, output <clears throat> as consequences of being privatized. I may have a few words to say also about what happens to workers and uh, uh, what happens to creative, the creative destruction process. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the consequences for firm performance of different methods of privatization to the extent that the, uh, uh, that the data permit. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I will also talk briefly about some variation in the effectiveness of productivity at raising firm performance, what we would call the heterogeneity of the effect <clears throat> in terms of um, uh, uh, a few different dimensions. Now, of course, there are lots of questions that one could ask about uh, privatization. So while the emphasis here is on, is on estimating the direct performance effects, um, <clears throat> and so what, what this means is a change of ownership from, from a shareholding which is dominated by the state to shareholding including and or expanding the role of, uh, of, private, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, of private owners, private investors. Um, uh, one could also talk about other kinds of privatization, about land and housing, about premises for shops. Um, <clears throat> These are certainly very important issues um, over uh, uh, BIA. In the, in, the, in the center of town last night, I met someone who was telling me about problems of land ownership for enterprises in Vietnam and uh, how it limits investment. Um, but they're not going to be the subject of my talk today. I could also talk about new entry. So there are lots of definitions of privatization. One of them encompasses entry of new private businesses. Um, <clears throat> some people have argued that this is a more important process than privatization. Uh, uh, actually, it's not clear that the empirical evidence supports that, but uh, in any case, I'm not talking about it today. I'm not talking about sequencing what should be privatized, how quickly, or what, what, what firms first, <clears throat> or uh, in general about the relationship with other policies, hardening of budget constraints, financial sector reform, et cetera, nor about the uh, uh, political economy of privatization, the consequences of privatization for political economy and decentralization, or about the political economy causes of uh, privatization. And in light of the, the, the title and the themes of this conference, I'm really not talking about inclusion or sustainability, although those could be uh, uh, potential topics. I've written quite a bit about the effect on workers of privatization, but one could also analyze um, <clears throat> issues of inequality and um, what happens to workers who are, uh, uh, who are laid off and what happens to work conditions. Also, there's some research on environmental aspects. So none of those things are part of what I am planning today. Uh, so we've, I, I'm trying to uh, 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 limit my topic, but even so limited, there's a vast uh, uh, ground to cover. <clears throat> First of all, I'm just going to mention briefly what is probably the prevailing view now about privatization. Theoretically, the way it works uh, is by uh, raising the cost to politicians of intervening in enterprise behavior. Under state ownership, the minister can simply call the, 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 uh, uh, the enterprise manager and order what the, what the uh, director should do. Uh, <clears throat> hire more workers, raise wages, or, 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 or uh, start a new product, or, or whatever. But uh, under privatization, it is, um, uh, uh, it's more costly for the politician to do that. The politician can still make the phone call, but the manager says, well, look, you know, we're private. I have owners I have to answer to, and so what are you going to do for us? And so the idea is that that will then tend to lead to an, uh, a, a change in the firm's behavior uh, uh, as a consequence of that. <clears throat> 
Okay, so, so uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of early research on, uh, on privatization that I just wanted to mention. When, when these topics were hot in the 1990s, there was enormous speculation about the effects of privatization, and there were also many empirical studies, but they suffered from uh, uh, substantial problems in estimating effects. The sample sizes were generally tiny, a couple hundred uh, observations on firms observed for a very short period of time. And uh, uh, so many questions can be raised about those studies, and I include my own studies from that time uh, uh, in raising those questions. So it's only more recently, when all the furor has died down about uh, East European and post-Soviet privatization, that we actually have managed to put together the data sets that allow us to estimate, I would say, with some greater degree of uh, reliability. So uh, larger numbers of observations, longer uh, time periods. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's possible now with the larger data sets to compare firms within narrow industries within the same year. And so we get rid of some important aspects of heterogeneity arising, for instance, if firms from particular industries tend to be privatized more rapidly than from others and there are different performances across those industries. So many studies of privatization are plagued by, uh, uh, by that problem. Um, <clears throat> it's also possible using longer panel data, uh, uh, panel data sets to introduce firm fixed effects and to add um, firm specific trends also to the, uh, 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 to the model. So we'll be looking at results that use universal data, that is for every firm in four countries. There are Hungary, Lithuania, Romania, and Ukraine. And uh, uh, for Russia, the data are more limited in a number of ways that I don't really have time to get into here, but it's a caveat for the analysis of, uh, uh, of Russia. Um, <clears throat> but in general, these are comparable samples and variables for these five countries. Um, these five countries were not chosen as a result of some random selection of uh, uh, transition economies. I wish I could tell you that, but it's, it's simply on the basis of data availability, data of this high quality and quantity type that enables us to uh, uh, estimate in a comparable way. <clears throat> And we are using the data uh, uh, on old firms. So old firms we define as firms that are inherited from the planning system. And they're measured as either existing before 1990 or ever having any state ownership. Uh, this is something about the coverage. We have about 600,000 firm year observations. And on average, in the time series, we have 14 observations. So we have a chance to observe these firms from a long time before they're privatized until a long time afterwards, which is a basic difference from lots of papers published in, say, the Journal of Finance that look at privatization all around the world and generally have uh, only very few years of observation on each of them. Um, <clears throat> here's a quick graph showing the evolution of privatization within this old sector. You can see that we start off uh, uh, zero private. Initially, there's a jump there in Hungary uh, where you see some jumps down. It means that state enterprises have been split up, and this is just simply the fraction of the sample with a private, um, <clears throat> with a private designation. So split ups lead to more state enterprises in the sample. But in all the countries, there's a big rise in the private share among, this, uh, 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 among the old firms. Um, <clears throat> uh, here, private is defined as 50% or more of the shares owned by, uh, uh, by private owners. We're gonna look a little bit at some alternative definitions of that, uh, uh, of that threshold. Um, <clears throat> so here are some initial, uh, initial results. Uh, this is the only table I'm actually gonna show you. Everything else is maybe more user-friendly graphs, but um, <clears throat> the, the main takeaway here is we can estimate with ordinary least squares, which is, uh, uh, functions only as a baseline, maybe comparison with earlier studies that were forced to use ordinary least squares for, uh, due to lack of information. We can add firm fixed effects, or we can add firm specific trends, which turns this into what is essentially a random growth model. But regardless of what we do, all of the estimated effects are positive, they're highly statistically significant, well, that's not difficult with 600,000 uh, uh, firm year observations, but uh, we're also putting in, uh, 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 we're, we're taxing this regression with a lot of uh, added variables. And so in the most highly taxed regression, we're still getting some substantial uh, uh, positive effects. 
Um, <clears throat> uh, let me turn to some heterogeneity issues. Uh, this is for the domestic versus foreign ownership. And uh, in the rest of the results, I'm dropping the OLS just to save space. And I'm going to always be showing you firm fixed effects and firm fixed effects plus trends. The trends, of course, reduce all of the uh, estimates. They just take a lot of variation uh, out of the data. <clears throat> but in all cases, we estimate, uh, uh, at least where they're statistically significant, we estimate larger effects from much larger effects from foreign investors compared with domestic. So the bang for labor productivity, for return on sales, a profitability measure, and for output are larger for, um, for foreign investors. Uh, <clears throat> I don't consider these, these uh, three uh, dependent variables to be equally reliable. My preferred one would be the labor productivity. I also have results with multi-factor productivity, which are similar to these. But uh, so the foreign effect is uh, much larger, which is something for policymakers to think about when they're designing future privatizations. Now I'm going to distinguish three levels of privatization, a 100% privatization, so all the shares uh, uh, are vested in private hands. Um, <clears throat> then we have majority, but not 100% privatizations. And finally, minority or partial privatizations, which have been pretty common in some countries. And uh, 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 some people think that they have uh, 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 substantial positive effects. Well, <clears throat> what we find is actually different from that, uh, uh, from that received wisdom, we find by far much stronger effects of privatizing all the shares in the firm. In fact, uh, for all of these, the, uh, uh, typically, the, the effect of uh, privatizing all, 100%, compared with privatizing a majority, but not 100%, is double, sometimes more than double. So getting the state out entirely is having a much bigger effect than, uh, than the majority. The minority privatizations are all estimated to be negative. Some of them are statistically significantly different from zero. So this mixture, at least for these countries and these data, of, uh, uh, of state and uh, private where private is not in control is actually negative for these, for these, uh, uh, for these firms. Um, <clears throat> uh, as uh, anybody who was reading the newspaper in the 1990s would know, there was a great controversy over different methods of privatization, voucher or mass, or mass uh, method, MEBOs, management employee buyouts, which is typically not really a buyout, but a giveaway to the insiders of the company with varying levels of, of non-managerial and managerial employee participation. Th then we have outside domestic investors and we have foreign investors. So once again, foreign investors are dominating here. But we also see the second best, so second best to uh, uh, domestic investment implied by these estimates is for an outside domestic investor. And MEBO is actually not far behind. So giving the firm to the employees on the, result, uh, on, on the basis of these results is not a, uh, 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 much worse than giving it to outside domestic investors. Voucher privatization, and I have, to, I have to caution that here, this distinction among methods, we can only actually measure in Romania. Um, <clears throat> and so Romania had a, had a voucher privatization program that yielded extremely dispersed individual ownership. And uh, that effect uh, uh, is typically the smallest among all the different methods. So methods of privatization do matter, or that's the implication of this analysis. When we look by country, so we have five countries here. These are the five. Russia, if you're especially interested in Russia, is the fourth one over. And Russia is, is uh, frequently having a negative effect overall. It might be because those privatizations were voucher or mass privatizations. I'm going to come back to talk about Russia a little more in just a second. But uh, uh, in countries that uh, were joining the European Union, like Hungary and Romania, the effects are typically uh, uh, where they're estimated precisely. They are, uh, so that's the first and the third of these, um, <clears throat> of these columns here, are typically large and positive, actually slightly larger in Romania compared with Hungary. So there's international heterogeneity in terms of how effective privatization has been. 
Uh, <clears throat> Uh, finally, if we look at the business environment, uh, and what I'm doing here is using the EBRD's average score of the progress and transition to a market economy made by these countries, and uh, seeing how the privatization effect varies with respect to that, um, <clears throat> uh, the data are unambiguously implying that a better business environment is associated with a stronger effect of privatization. Now, you might say, well, that's obvious, but actually, it hasn't been obvious for a lot of people. It was frequently argued that um, privatization could actually substitute for the business environment. So in the absence of a good environment, so with other kinds of constraints, other disciplinary devices on management, such as financial markets, well-functioning legal system, et cetera, it was argued that privatization might be more effective. So what we're finding here is different from that. OK, Russian anomalies, Russia's uh, uh, performance effect of privatization tends to be negative. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the wage effect also tends to be negative. The employment effect tends to be positive. I'm not talking uh, much about wages and employment here, although I'd be happy to if you have questions. But um, <clears throat> Russia is basically an outlier in just about any analysis that one does. So it merits some special attention. Well, <clears throat> one thing we can do is Russia also has the advantage of being a very large country. And uh, it consists of 75-odd um, <clears throat> subjects of the federation, like states, oblasts, uh, uh, they're typically called. Uh, <clears throat> so we can estimate a privatization effect separately for each of them. If we do that, we draw a history. Uh, uh, of those, what we find is that yes, the dis distribution is centered around zero or a little bit to the left of zero, but we have some oblasts, some parts of Russia, where there's a positive effect of privatization that actually looks like Central Europe. Uh, <clears throat> and then there's some parts where the estimated effect is uh, large and negative. Uh, <clears throat> where are those different? parts of uh, Russia with those different effects. Well, it turns out they're all over the place. So here, a darker, uh, this is the estimated effect. So here, a darker color uh, implies a larger effect. And it kind of looks here just because we have these huge uh, 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 Siberian oblasts, uh, <clears throat> that much of it is dark. But uh, uh, in fact, the dark ones are scattered uh, uh, everywhere. Here. And so geographically, it's not true that European Russia, on average, has a stronger effect than uh, uh, Asian Russia. <clears throat> OK, well, so, so uh, uh, the results which, which we published on, on this topic, which, are, which uh, got a lot of attention and gen generated some controversy, use data only through 2002. Unfortunately, Russia stopped the systematic uh, collection and release of data. Um, <clears throat> uh, and it was much harder to get. But we've obtained data through 2005. And here what we're doing is we're allowing that effect to vary by calendar year. So most of the Russian privatization took place in 92 to 94. So if we allow the effect to vary by calendar year, what we, what we obtain is and in fact, we had already reported was this big dip in the late 1990s, then coming back close to zero. But we, what we hadn't seen was this big rise afterwards. So if you plot this for all the countries, the other countries are going to look like this. Uh, so Russia uh, uh, in, in the early 2000s was essentially catching up to where Hungary and Romania were in the mid-1990s. Uh, <clears throat> foreign privatization effect is basically always positive. We have a small blip down, but not statistically significant, with some drop off towards the end. So I'm really hoping we're going to be able to get some more recent data and see what has happened with, with this. But, but uh, one interpretation could be this was around the time where Khodorkovsky was being uh, 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 imprisoned and uh, uh, or first brought to trial. And uh, so foreign investors were feeling less um, <clears throat> less comfortable, less willing to invest than they had been formerly. OK, so uh, just to conclude, uh, some lessons. If you ask me for the average effect of privatization um, <clears throat> on uh, uh, productivity in these economies, um, these would be conservative estimates. So these are from the estimates including firm-specific trends. Uh, uh, so call those the best estimates. The foreign effects are much stronger. Um, 
And the foreign effects also tend to be more uniform. So even in Russia, there's a strong foreign effect. So it's the domestic uh, privatization effects that vary much more. Methods matter. So sales uh, uh, seems to produce a stronger performance effect than MEVOs do. And those are better than voucher or mass. Uh, the more that's privatized, the stronger is going to be the effect on firm performance. Uh, of course, there are trade-offs with speed uh, and politics um, <clears throat> that are uh, uh, involved here because it can be much faster to do a voucher privatization than to engage in case-by-case -case sales. By the way, the employment and wage effects are usually small, um, <clears throat> while the Russian average is masking large regional variations. So maybe it's not really a function so much of the method of privatization, but um, instead of aspects of the local environment, and that's a topic also that we have uh, uh, written on. Finally, the pr privatization and the business environment are complements rather than substitutes. So it does make sense to try to improve institutions uh, before or while privatizing. And I have some supplementary slides, which I'd be happy to refer to if you have questions. Thank you. <laughs>